It's time for another Hyperstar update video. What's up guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to the Easy Astro Images channel. And the other night we finally got to go out with the Hyperstar running on the Celestron AVX. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description and up here somewhere. Maybe if you're looking for a more budget mount and if you're just looking for a mount that you can find in stock at all, AVX is actually a pretty decent option. So here's the Hyperstar in all of its glory, sitting on the EQ6R Pro right now. Actually, the other night when we had this out, I did all of the imaging on the AVX mount, which actually turned out just great. Did some stuff at the end of the night on the EQ6R Pro, just got done doing the hyper tuning on it. It still needs some work, so those images didn't turn out that great, but I'll show you those anyway. If you take a look at my current Adu configuration, you can see that we have the Celestron Dew Shield on there and a big old Dew Strap here. Really not doing a lot for tube heat. It's more just kind of holding everything on there. Never really had a Dew problem, but now Celestron has came up with an awesome idea that we got that we're gonna throw on here. What Celestron has now is these actually built-in dew heater rings that we can install. And all it does is just literally replace the ring that you have on the outside of your telescope. Comes with all the necessary wires and stuff like that. And you can run this off of your ASI Air Pro. I'll be running off of that or my Pegasus Astro uh, Pocket Power Advance 2. Got a heated gasket, heated pad there on the bottom that you can see. We'll take a look at a closer look at it in an upcoming video. So we kind of have cheat mode activated here on the Hyperstar, insert your favorite video game music. And what I mean by cheat mode is a couple things. First of all, we swapped the camera out to an ASI 533. Way smaller sensor, but with the speed of Hyperstar, we can make up for that. I'll show you how I did that with Mosaics. Turned out great. I'm very, very happy about it. Most of this stuff we need to talk about at the computer so you can see how things perform. I do want to do a full collimation on this for you guys when things get a little bit warmer outside and I can properly do it. I found out a couple little things with collimating Hyperstar that really can uh, help things out a little bit. I'm still trying to figure out if I need to include some spacing or not. I've shot with spacing. I've shot without extra spacing. Really can't tell that big of a difference, but I've been trying to sort out some mount issues. And if you like the things that we're doing here on the channel and you're interested in all this Hyperstar stuff, then don't forget to subscribe. Also got back out using the GT81 and the ASI Air Pro. I forgot how much I love this thing. Super glad I was able to get it actually working. Now, if I can just get rid of the pinch optics in my GT81, I will be a happy camper. But for some reason, vendors and retailers do not like to respond to support tickets right now. Anyway, let's go to the computer and show you what's going on with this Hyperstar. I got everything here in Pix in sight. First thing I want to take a look at is just the flat frame from the 533. And if we put a super stretch on this, you can see that we've got a pretty even field. There's a little bit of extra brightness there in the middle. Sometimes it shows up in my images, sometimes it doesn't. Seems like every time I've had this Hyperstar out lately, there's been greater than a half moon, full moon. It's been really rough uh, shooting here with this thing. So compromising for the small sensor of the 533, but leveraging the advantage of F2, we shot an hour and 45 minutes on a two panel mosaic of the jellyfish. And you can see that uh, we've got uh, gradient, flat issues, something like that, whatever. Stars turned out okay. This was on the AVX. Guiding was about 1.5, so nothing super, but again, as I mentioned in the AVX video, nothing that we just can't take care of with a little bit of star reduction. So we're kind of cheating our way into some images here. This is what our full merged mosaic looks like. Rotation may or may not be correct. Let's see this actually rotated a few different ways, but my main goal was to accomplish was capture the jellyfish, some surrounding NGC items, and also all of this extra nebulosity here in the middle. Taking a look at the quick processed image here with a lot of the easy processes that we like to use here on the channel. You can see that we've got a freaking awesome image of the jellyfish. Lots of good detail inside there. We can capture more. We'll definitely be adding more data to this. Of course, we've got these files that we can just load right into Nita and pick right up on the sequence where we left off. But all in all, for a little over three hours of integration, I am pretty happy at the way that everything looks. Still kind of iffy on the way, I don't know. 
the Rasa seems to pick things up a lot better than the C6 Hyperstar does. I'm not sure how much the extra aperture really plays into it. Obviously, it's a lot. It seems that uh, I, I could definitely... I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence on what's going on, but I, I cannot recommend that Ross 8 until Celestron completely redoes that. The C6 Hyperstar or a C8 with Hyperstar is definitely the better way to go for tuning options. I did a really wide shot of the Rosette Nebula, a four panel wide shot. I only got about 30 minutes on each panel before everything kind of went behind the house for the evening. Uh, the first three panels all configured out pretty good, but for some reason here, I can't get this one here to actually DBA out correctly. You can see that we've got some crazy gradients and stuff going on here. So I think it was just maybe too close to the moon there at the end of the night. Plus I only got half the amount of exposures on this one that I did with the other panels in the mosaic. But all in all, you know, for Oh, geez, 20 minutes of exposure. I mean, you can just see like the detail that we got captured inside here. The noise is not horrible at all. We got the Hyperstar stars going on, of course, because I haven't done any cable management to route and clean that stuff up a little bit. But all in all, again, just super impressed with the way that everything is working. Took out those bad corners by going to the smaller sensor. I like the 533 camera. It's not perfectly smack dab in the middle of the sampling size like the 183 is, but the smaller pixel. But it's just a great second camera to have, especially when Galaxy Season comes up. I like this square format for Galaxies and everything. And again, with the power of Hyperstar being able to do things like this and do these big mosaics and everything, I mean, why do you need to fuss with all of the problems that a larger sensor will give you and of course the extra price and cost that's involved in all that. So that's a quick update about how everything is going with the Hyperstar guys. All I'm hoping for now is some good weather so I can tune out the EQ6R a little bit more. I would really love to get that thing guiding perfect and just kind of point this Hyperstar somewhere at the sky and start knocking off like some huge five, 10, 15 minute exposures just to see like what it will do. I used to love doing that with my Rasa and just uh, it was a really fun time. But for now, we'll just keep on plucking away an hour at a time, half hour at a time and getting some data to play with and picks in sight and learning more processes and things like that. So again, just having a great time. If you have any questions about any of this, please let me know. We'll do our best to help you. Thank you again for all the subscribers now. I think we're up to about 320. That is just fantastic for a couple months. So thank you again for everything, guys. And we will see you on the next video. Peace.